thanks you guys for, for joining us today. Um, we're going to talk about pitching, being ready to pitch. So we're looking for software companies, me specifically software, uh, to invest in. Um, and we're an early stage uh, venture capital organization here in Halifax. Good morning, I'm Ross Finley. I'm co-founder and director of the First Angel Network. Uh, we have a network in Atlantic Canada of high net worth individuals that are looking for exceptional deals to invest in exceptional companies we can add value to. Over the last uh, 10 years, we've invested and co-invested a total of about $14.5 million in 30 companies here in Atlantic Canada, and we were just want to, we're having fun doing it. So looking forward to sharing some of our experiences with you. Hi, my name is Leah Scarry. I'm the co-founder and CEO of iRead. Uh, our company helps children learn to read, and we do that by using interactive games and eye tracking on tablets and mobile devices. Uh, we're, we're early stage. We've raised $600,000 through our friends and family round, uh, and we are kicking off our seed round very shortly here. Um, and this was the very first place that we pitched when iRead was just an idea. Okay, well, let's, um, let's start with you. Yeah. When did you know you were? It was time to pitch. How did you know you were ready, or did you know you were ready? Yeah. Well, I think I think Lana covered that. So um, we had been working on a project in eye tracking um, to really understand the usability of applications in a in a tech company that we we're working in called Norex, um, and we saw an application that we could. Uh, used to um, measure reading abilities of children. And so we did a project with, with Dalhousie to, to show that this was in fact a technology that could be used. And beyond that, we did the very first study in the world show, that showed individual differences in reading through eye patterns with Florida State University. And um, that was great. We had, we had some um, proven um, product. Um, use cases, but at the, at the time we really had uh, an idea and so we had an opportunity to pitch here at, at Fundica and uh, when I spoke to Lynn I said, you know, it's really just an idea, I'm not too sure if we're, we're ready for this and she said, we'll come out and, and try it and we pitched and we won that and then went off to, to pitch in San Francisco. Um, and what I learned, especially in San Francisco, is that what you think um, is a big idea is not big enough for the investors in and VCs in San Francisco. So it's it's really never too early. Um, don't be afraid to to pitch your idea. It's really meant to get people interested. Um, you're not giving away your IP. So in my in my experience, it's never too early. Ross or Andrew, what do you guys think about um, timing? When when is a startup? When should a startup start? Maybe not even pitch, but start building a relationship with investors. I, I think as soon as you um, have formed your company, have decided to go forward with it, uh, you, there's a whole bunch of people you should talk to at that stage. First one would be your bank manager. Tell them that what your plans are. You're not looking for any loans or anything. But the more you you um, socialize your idea, your business plan, your and get ideas from um, sources like Andrew or First Angel Network, we're happy to hear about what you're doing, what your plans are, and maybe we can help save you some money along the way by make, not making mistakes on your own money. So. Um, so maybe I'll distinguish between the sort of formal pitch that you'll do to our investment team. We had a company come in yesterday and do like a full, we spent an hour with them, just our investment team. They spent 20 to 30 minutes just going through their pitch, and then we just asked them questions afterwards. Versus the first time we talk to you, you should have your sort of 60-second elevator pitch. Here's what we do. And that the first time you meet us, you should be telling us what you do. Um, you might not be at that point ready for us to do a, an actual investment in you, but we like working with companies to get them ready for investment. Um, we want to invest in good companies and part of our role is to help companies be investable. Uh, so yeah, when you've got an idea that you can kind of formulate and put together, talk to us and then we'll work with you to get you ready for that big formal pitch. So is it ever too early? Do you ever talk to people and you say, guys, too early? Um, I'll, since I've got the mic, I'll, I'll start off. Um, 
it's definitely too early for money from us. Uh, so all the time I get people who talk to us and I say, right now you're too early, but here's, if you're interested in investment, here's the path that you can follow that will lead you to investment. And sort of setting those expectations early is better because if you don't know what we're looking for and you're early, you could spend a year working on something that doesn't really interest us at all or doesn't really interest in investors at all, versus if you talk to us early, we can help direct you down those paths that are going to be interesting to us for as investors. Yeah. Thanks. I would just add that um, I agree with everything Andrew said. Um, but one of the things that once you start talking to people about your business, I want you to think about not talking about what you do, but talk more about what you do for your customer. Because we don't necessarily will understand your technology. We don't, you know, we, we're not sure what path you should be taking uh, until we know what the end goal is. And that is how do you, how do you engage customers? So talk about that right from the beginning. Get that into your head. And as you are developing your technology, make sure you're developing your business in concert with that. You've got parallel streams, technology development and business development. Do them both at the same time and you can get there faster. Leah, what, do you, what have you found to be some of the key things that investors have kind of honed in on when you've started to pitch that maybe you didn't expect when you, when you started out the process? Yeah, I think it, it depends on the, the the type of investor, and I, I, I do really think that there there are um, you know a number of of different pitches that you have to have. Um, you know, uh, when when you're pitching, I think locally here, um, the business is very very important. Um, angels want to see the numbers. They want to see that you've thought about the your business plan and how you're going to take it from you know, zero to a hundred. Um, and that's, that's, you know, been a, a focus is really thinking about what those, those numbers are and how you're going to acquire part of your, part of the market that you, you've um, set out to, to build. Um, and, you know, if you're, if you're looking for bigger dollars, I, I really think they're, their focus, um, and I'm talking VCs in, in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, uh, is on the big idea, uh, and and you know they, they really want to see that it's something that's novel, and you know they really I, I sat and I pitched I read and I'm like man this is amazing and I'm like that's so cool, but have you seen Magic Leap and have you seen like these um, and if you guys know Magic Leap it's the augmented reality company that's just doing really amazing things, um, and they want ideas like as big as that and so um, it's like the it's like okay you'll you'll figure out the numbers as long as you've got a you know solid team the numbers will come and it's it's kind of a, a different approach so those have been the the two surprises that I've found when when pitching um, almost polar opposites big on ideas and then others really big on how you're going to make um, you know your your first milestones a reality. I just well, in the beginning the investors are investing in the the people in the company. And I remember our, the second deal we ever did, uh, we thought we had really prepared the, invest, the uh, entrepreneur for the questions they might be receiving. And then the first question that came up, it was a husband and wife team with, a, with a, an idea. And uh, so the first question that, the, that was asked of them, we hadn't even thought of. And that was, what happens if you two split up? So they are sincerely interested in you. So uh, that's really important to, be, to remember as you develop your pitch. What kind of things, what are the key things that you guys look for? Is there one or two things that, even if it's just personally, that you're like, I need to hear X, Y, or Z to be in on something? Um, and maybe I'll follow on a bit with Leah's comments. Um, as a sort of institutional investor, we have sort of a hurdle that you have to cross in terms of the size of the market. Um, as an early stage, that hurdle is probably lower than it is in Silicon Valley. They're putting in $50 million 
your company can't be a $50 million company. Um, and so that's probably the first thing is that your company has to be a big enough idea for us to probably get 10 times our money back because most of you are unfortunately not going to make it to those big exits. And so if we invest in 10 companies and only one is a big exit, that company needs to be at least 10 times bigger than when we invested in it for us to just even break even. And so that's probably the, the single hurdle that you have to cross. Um, and so if you come to us with a smaller idea, um, and the definition of small or big kind of varies person to person or place to place. Um, but so after you've crossed that hurdle, then the real question, that's just the, the bar that gets set. And then it's, can you guys actually do this? Can you deliver on the plan that hits that hits that sort of goal, hits that size of the company that we're looking for. That's ultimately the single question that we ask is, can these guys deliver and do, make this into a big company? Thank you. Um, you know, I would, we look at the people first and foremost and uh, the maturity, the, and that doesn't mean age maturity, that means mental maturity and, and your understanding of how to develop a business. We also look for, as Leo said, some groundbreaking stuff. I mean, things that will just are game changers. One of our portfolio companies has the patent to transmit electrical power over Wi-Fi. That's a game changer. So that's the kind of thing we try and find. And we're blessed in Atlantic Canada with the uh, research and educational institutions we have. So there's a lot of game-changing things happening out there. and So we try and f weed out or find the best. What are, what are some of the gaps that, you've see, that you see consistently in entrepreneurs when they're, when they're coming to pitch? <laughs> um, so one thing that we like to see is, first off, we have a lot of great engineers, a lot of great product people here. We, I think we have also a lot of great business people here. Uh, there's probably not enough of these people getting together and built, having a great business person with a great product people. Uh, we really like to see both of those things in investments that we make. Um, the product is, is very important, but without the team to sort of take that to market, it's not, a, it's not an investable opportunity. Um, I have a sort of an engineering background. That was my first mistake I made with my first company was I built this really cool product but I didn't even consider the whole business side of things. Um, and so that's, that's probably the biggest mistake is just building a product and not considering the business side or the business guys. They, they need the product guys, but we need more uh, sort of collaboration between the really good business people and the really good product people. Yeah, I think um, that... One of the gaps that we often see is a gap in expectations. And that is what you think this product is capable of and then what others think. And so when you talk to us, you, you have to be able to bridge that gap for us and tell us why it's going to get there and what were the assumptions that you used to come up with that, that number or that... Uh, you know, that growth, growth projection. So that's, that's very important to us, and we, that's where a gap comes. The other gap that we see often is a gap in valuation. So you think that company, we had someone in a few weeks back, hadn't even done the prototype yet, but it was worth 60 million bucks. 60 million. Uh, I don't think so. so that that's always a gap that uh, we have to cross with all of the entrepreneurs that we meet. Would you like me to answer the same question? <coughs> okay. Um, gaps. Uh, in terms of pitching, uh, I think one, one, I might be jumping ahead here, uh, but I think one of the things that I've been guilty of is just uh, in terms of pitching is making the ask at the end of the pitch, um, whether it's an audience, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, make an ask every time. Uh, and I think 
in terms, it's not enough to say we're raising 500,000. You've got to say we're raising 500,000 to build our development team, get the Android app, and that's going to get us to 200,000 users, and we think we can reach our milestones. Um, it's got to be specific, and then you've got to have an ask whether, it, if you're not fundraising, ask for feedback, ask for a partnership, um, it go go into um, every pitch knowing who you're pitching to, um, and have have that ask thought out. And the only way to do that is by doing your homework um, and understanding the people that you're speaking to, because it's their time that you're you're taking, and you you want to make sure it's valuable for them too. If I can add just one thing, and that is, try and pitch when you don't need the money, when you're not ready, because. It's three to six months easily from the day you pitch either Novacore or First Angel or any investor, really. Um, it's three to six months before you can expect to get a check. So I've had lots of calls on a Thursday saying, uh, we just need 50 grand to make payroll tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. So always prepare yourself well in advance. Leah had a, brought up an interesting topic about knowing your audience and who you're talking to. How much, if at all, should you be tailoring your pitch to different types of investors? Um, so as an institutional investor, we have certain things that we want to see, um, and all institutional investors are going to see. We're going to need to see that you have probably $30 million in revenue in five years. Um, we're going to need to see that this is a big enough market that you can get there. Um, generally, investors are looking for the same thing, but once you get into institutional money, we want to see big returns. Angel investors want to see big returns, but if you put in $50,000 into a company and you're an angel investor and you get $250,000 back, that's probably an interesting investment. For us, we need the, a large dollar value to come out of it. So for us, it needs to be a multi-hundred million dollar company that comes out so that we can get 10 or 20 million dollars back. That's what we're really looking for. We're not looking to have 10 times our money coming back. We're looking to have a, a big return coming back. And that's the same thing with most institutional investors. With individual investors, or maybe I'll let the angels speak a bit more to that. Um, but for us, so that's probably the only, the only real difference that I that I would see having pitched angel investors, having pitched venture capitals, and being on that side of the table is venture money needs a big dollar return. And the angel money doesn't always need the big dollar return. They like the ROI though. Yeah, the the. Just a little more on the difference between angels and institutional investors or venture capital. Um, we, the checks come uh, come out of our bank accounts. Um, the institutional investors are investing other people's money, but this is our own. And and things, angels are not obligated to invest in anything. So, just because you pitch them doesn't mean they're gonna they're gonna write a check for you. So, have you had to? Tailor your presentation or your, your audience? I just go ahead. I had one story. Um, you do have to tailor your pitch and your, your business plan and everything to whomever it is you are going to be speaking to. We had a company that came to us a while ago and they, they said, uh, they gave us a business plan. We said, you know, we're angels, we're looking for an exit strategy. How do you see this ride coming to an end for us? So they went off and wrote an exit strategy into their business plan and came back. And so said, that's better, yeah, that, we understand that now. And then they took that business plan to ACOA. And ACOA said, you're going to exit? We're not, we're not going to invest in you, we're here for the jobs. You know, so we're trying to create jobs. So you have to, you have to understand who it is you're pitching and what their goals are. Government agencies are looking to build jobs. Institutional investors are looking for a huge payback. We'd be happy if we get five times our money back on 50 grand. Yeah. Yeah. I probably have about 25 versions of my pitch or more. Uh, it's, it's so key to, again, know who you're pitching to and change um, that pitch depending on that person um, or even the situation. I mean, don't sit down in a 
coffee shop and pull out your laptop and give your pitch, um, you know, like you would in, in an audience. Find a clever way to, to make that pitch happen. Um, there's something called a napkin pitch where you sit down in front of a person one-on-one -on -one and you just write down the key numbers that you need to talk about on the back of a napkin with a pen. And that's a super engaging way um, to, to keep that, that person interested in, in your company. Uh, so absolutely, um, tailor it. Uh, if you are speaking to um, you know a U.S. investor, it's much different. Uh, Andrew and I were, were at a pitch together um, at, at Wentworth, and one of the entrepreneurs was called out for not making the change um, to to you know a Canadian audience, and and they were based in the U.S. and 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 uh, so I think that's really key too is to consider that. So you said you have about 25 versions, um, and you know, we've heard some people say the deck is so important, it's your lifeblood. Some people say it's not that important. Where do you guys sit on how much time and effort should be put into the actual deck itself and the storytelling, I guess? Well, I, I guess it gets to the point of how much time have you, have you got? If you've got a 10-minute pitch, don't pull out 30 slides. You've got, you've got about two minutes per slide. So if you've got 10 minutes, that gives you five slides. Oh, but wait, you have an introduction and a conclusion you have to make. So you really have maybe three, four slides that you should have that can concisely present everything that you, your business is about to, uh, to the people that you're pitching to. So if you've got a half hour, that's a different story. You can get into the depth. You can you can uh, spend time talking about how you, how you came up with the idea and so on. <clears throat> so ultimately, it's about the business. It's about the investment opportunity. The pitch deck is just a means to get there. Um, having said that, um, it's super important that you take your time to do your homework, be prepared, come there. You should practice this thing as much as you can because as we've talked about earlier on, we're investing in you. Who do we want to invest in? The person who does every single thing they can to close the deal. Uh, so if you're super prepared, you run through your pitch over and over, you have all the questions, you just hit them out of the park, that it's, it's great that you do that from the business perspective, but we're judging you based off of the quality of your, of your pitch and your preparation. Uh, so th it's hugely important. Ultimately, the business needs to be there. You can have the best pitch ever, but if the business isn't there, it doesn't matter. If the business is there, you can kind of get by on a, on a shaky pitch, but we're going, to, we're going to judge you and your sort of quality as a CEO based off of how well you do on the pitch. I was just going to add, a few, a few years ago, they talked about uh, the concept of 10 seconds to wow. Okay, so you, the first 10, 12 seconds of your, of your pitch, at the end of that, People should be going, wow, I really get it. And it's the same, they used to call it a twitch. So it's, can you explain your business in, in 140 characters or less? Do you guys have any tips for the companies that are going to get up here today and, and pitch? Well, I think you've probably all had pitch training or understand what the elements of a pitch are. So I would suggest you just try and relax, use the nervous energy that you're going to have positively, and just remember <coughs> how many, you guys have all heard pitches, right? Some you've seen pitches. What, how do you feel when a pitch goes bad? How do you as the audience feel? Terrible. Right? You go, oh my God, poor guy. Rich, just remember, the audience wants you to do well. Okay? So they're not looking to shut you down. They want you to do well because it's so uncomfortable when you don't. And the thing you also have to remember is nobody in this room will know more about your business and your technology than you. So you're here to teach. Okay? You're here to educate others. 
Um, just just back on the pitch deck, there's um, there's something that you can do if you're using Google presentation or, or uh, PowerPoint. Um, so you can actually number your slides and, and, and they're not visible, but what you're able to do is number your slides um, and create um, a, an outline at the beginning of the, the slide and how you organize it. And what you should know is exactly what number of slide is, is what topic. Um, you can even have it written down in front of you. So when somebody asks you a question, you're not fumbling through your slides. Um, you really want to be sharp and you want to be on point when you're answering questions and you want to know that information. Um, so that's just one thing that you can use as, as a tool to, to, to be really sharp in your pitches when you do have a, a pitch deck. Um, I, I personally think you should put a lot of time into that, that deck, especially if you're emailing it. Um, there's nothing worse, I think, than sending a deck and the person receiving it still has no clue what, what you do. Um, you're not you're not able to communicate it person to person, and, and if they're requesting it, which I, I really think try to get the the face to face, um, make sure it's very clear and that you've you've proven that it's very clear. Um, in terms of uh, tips, you you uh, you know your or advice, you know your business, and I think that's really important. Beyond that, I think it's important critical as an entrepreneur to be brutally honest with yourself about your idea and if you believe it's something that can be achievable. Um, really listen because I think as an entrepreneur you can tend to um, sort of bulldoze through some of the critical comments and those comments are, are worthwhile and, and worth considering. Um, but beyond that, one of um, when I, I was uh, at, at the Black Box program in San Francisco, um, one of the um, fellow alumni said, um, unsuccessful equals 100 no's, successful equals 99 no's. And so just keep that in mind every time you're pitching. And keep your hands out of your pockets and away from your face. <laughs> Um, maybe it's a bit too late for this advice, but the number one problem I see with pitches is people get up there and they're like, I built this really cool thing and look what it does. Um, what we want to see is here's this really big problem and here's how we solve it. The product should be like one slide out of ten. The overall problem that you're solving and how you go about solving it, why people want this solved, the, the sort of investment opportunity is really what you're pitching. You're not pitching your product, you're pitching your solution. Yeah, that's great advice. Are there, we have like two more minutes, but do any of you guys have questions for the panel? Are you all scrambling to open your decks and slide things around and number them? Um, Ross, you talked about the wow factor and how that can be just wondering if you could talk about any pitch you saw where that you just were so wowed in the first 10 to 12 seconds, like an example of how to do that. Sure. It's one pitch that I remember um, quite well was the one where they started off by saying, in Canada, 7,000 people die every year because the pharmacist can't read the handwriting of the doctor. Our product solves that. Okay. Well, thanks very much.